I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today's chapter is 2 Kings chapter 12, but we're going to start with the last sentence of chapter 11, which is verse 21, and then we'll read straight into chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. So let's begin. Joash was seven years old when he became king. In the seventh year of Jehu, Joash became king. He reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Ziba, who was from Beersheba. Throughout the time Jehoiada the priest instructed him, Joash did what was right in the Lord's sight. And yet the high places were not taken away. The people continued sacrificing and burning incense on the high places. There's a story of a British colonel whose battalion was defending a bridge in World War II. Ammunition was nearly gone, casualties were high, and the colonel's men had been fighting for 50 hours nonstop. And during this time, one of the battalion chaplains met the colonel who was coming out of the toilet. (laughs) A smile lit up on the colonel's dirty, stubble-covered face. Father, he said, the window's shattered, there's a hole in the wall, and the roof is gone, but it has a chain and it works. (laughs) Amid the battle, the devastation, all the death, all that was not lost, the toilet still worked. You see, sometimes that's all you need to be reminded of God's mercy. Have you ever been there? That is the testimony of the first three verses of today's chapter. Out of the evil of Athaliah's regime, In chapter 11, with royal blood still dripping from her hands and tyranny occupying her throne, there is nonetheless a seven-year-old heir of David who begins to reign. So is there any practical application here? Because what seems merely like a business report, it's just the rote observations of a royal rule, is in fact glorious. What appears uneventful is thrilling. It is as if the writer says the kingdom is divided, it's in shambles, people don't have any money, the temple's in disrepair, but the covenant still works. It is of utmost importance that believers grasp all of this, sit and soak in it for a while. Otherwise, we become ungrateful for the day-to-day provision of the Lord. That day-to-day, chapter-by-chapter, simple provision from God's Word is the power behind Groundworks Ministries. It is your appointment, simple appointment with the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And so often we become ministry adrenaline junkies, right? Miracle hounds looking for the next big move of God or the next big program that's going to change the world. Those things never come, although they're promised all the time. Both Israel and Judah should have been relieved when the kitchen fire drama of royal apostasy simmered down to a step-by-step kingdom. And surely we recognize that many of God's gifts come wrapped in plain brown paper packages. They are gifts of the Lord nonetheless. Mundane mercies are still mercies, and simple provisions are still God's provision. Consider this from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and a quiet life in all goodness and dignity. Once again, 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 and 2. So if the Lord has granted us peace in our hometowns, is that no less a miracle simply because it feels ordinary? Remember, there is nothing petty about God's simple provision. And if you've ever gone without it for a season, you'll praise the day that it returns. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the daily teaching of Groundworks Ministries, and you'd like to help us lead God's people back to the Bible, Would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? We need your support now more than ever. And donating is secure and it's easy at our website. So check us out at groundworksministries.com.